Should Christians Pray for Persecution? Uh, around 20 years ago, a popular Christian novel uh, was written by Randy Alcorn entitled Safely Home. Uh, I read it shortly after that and remember being impressed by the vivid contrast uh, that Alcorn drew between the comfortable middle class life of a, of a, of a typical American uh, versus the, the experience of the persecuted church in China. Uh, but the part of the story that impacted me the most was toward the end the Chinese protagonist uh, said to his American friend, he, he said that he would pray that he and the American church would face persecution uh, so that uh, he and, and the rest of the church would be better equipped to serve Christ. And over the years, uh, while I haven't uh, made that a part of my typical prayer life, uh, I've always assumed that it was acceptable to pray for persecution. Uh, after all, doesn't Jesus tell, uh, doesn't he tell us to endure suffering uh, for the sake of the gospel? Doesn't uh, James say to count it all joy uh, when we face trials? Uh, but recently, I ran across the opposite view in the writings of J. Gresham Machen uh, in the book uh, that, he, uh, that he worked on in uh, 1936, published in 1937, entitled The Christian View of Man. Uh, in chapter 14, he pulls no punches in his rejection of this idea. He says, It would be very wicked, for example, to pray for that kind of temptation which comes to a Christian through persecution from the adversaries of the faith. It would be very wicked to pray to God, O oh Lord, put it into the heart of this tyrannical ruler or that to persecute the church. Withdraw from him the restraints of thy common grace, in order that the church may receive the blessing which persecution might bring. It would be very wrong to pray that prayer, and it would be very wrong to provoke a wicked ruler in any way whatever to persecuting zeal. It's quite a statement. Uh, why is Machen so confrontational uh, about this? Uh, it's because he believes that such a prayer is essentially a prayer for evil. Uh, when you pray for persecution, what are you praying for directly? You're praying for things like the imprisonment and suffering of the innocent, the separation of families, even murder for simply believing uh, in Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, it's true you are indirectly praying for good things. You're praying for a stronger, purer church, uh, perhaps. But this doesn't negate the fact that you're directly praying for the expansion of evil in the world. Now, for what it's worth, this isn't just Machen's opinion. Uh, the Westminster Larger Catechism in Answer 184 references 1 John 5.14 and says that we should not pray for anything that is unlawful. And what could be more unlawful than harming Christians simply for their faith? Uh, perhaps the closest biblical example would be the imprecatory psalms in which the psalmist prays for judgment against his enemies. But even there, the prayer is for harm to come to someone as repayment for evil, not as punishment for good. Now, of course, we realize that God can use evil for good. Uh, two obvious examples of this from the Bible are the stories of Joseph uh, as he's being sold into slavery uh, and Jesus being crucified. Uh, Machen recognizes this too. He says, when persecution does come, does come despite the prayers of God's people and despite their peaceable lives, it does remain true very often that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. God overrules evil for good. So how should we pray, practically speaking? Let me make a few suggestions. First, we should pray for peace and justice in society. Uh, we should pray for the purity and growth of the church. We should pray for the perseverance to gracefully handle any trials that come our way. Uh, we should pray for the persecuted church, that God would protect them and use their suffering for his glory, for his good purposes. And finally, let me recommend that you learn from those who have faced persecution for their faith. If you can, talk to them in person, uh, but otherwise read their stories. Uh, read about the persecution of Polycarp, or Perpetua Felicity, and others in the early church. Read about the French Huguenots and the Chinese church of today. Read the biography, biographies of Christian missionaries. Let them remind you that true Christianity often entails persecution. Prepare yourself for it, prepare your church for it, and prepare your children for it. But don't pray for it. I hope you've found this brief video to be helpful. Uh, if you'd like more content like this, subscribe to this channel. 
uh, for more on Machen Reformed theology in general. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.